Hey fabulous people, it's Lenny Fabulous again and I'm going to deal with the elephant in the room. I have not been doing a good job keeping up at Disney in December, especially in comparison to how well I did with the Chilling Challenge. I don't know why exactly I've been having such trouble getting the videos done and put out. I guess I'm just busier than I had expected to be. Anyway, to make it up for you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and finish the rest of my Disney alphabet in this one big apology video, and I'll try to upload more videos throughout the rest of the month. So the last letter I did was E for Princess Alonwi, so now I'm on F. For F, I'm choosing Figaro the Cat. He is the little black and white kitten that you see in Disney's Pinocchio. And actually, after being in Pinocchio, Disney went on to use him in other things, like lots of little shorts. Usually, he was Minnie's cat as opposed to Mickey's dog. Because Mickey had Pluto, and you'd get cute episodes with Mickey and Pluto. So they gave Minnie Figaro to play off each other, and there's a lot of cute little shorts with both Pluto and Figaro involved, or sometimes... Cleo the goldfish or a little bird named Frankie and they're really interesting cute videos and I would definitely recommend looking them up and giving them a watch. For G I'm going to talk about Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. There have been a few different people who have portrayed Gaston and the character remains more or less the same no matter the rendition. My favorite is probably always going to be the original animated version, but there is a special place in my heart for the Broadway version done by Hugh Jackman, just because it's Hugh Jackman. Anyway, for H, I'm doing Hercules from Hercules. He is one of my favorite Disney redheads, and as my fun fact for Hercules, there is a running fan theory that Hercules and Ariel are cousins. Ariel from The Little Mermaid. The reasoning for this being that Hercules is the son of Zeus. Zeus has two brothers, Hades and Poseidon. Now in the mythology, Poseidon has several children, including a son named Triton. Ariel is the daughter of King Triton, who is ruler of the sea. It would make perfect sense for his father to be Poseidon, god of the oceans. So that would be how Ariel and Hercules are related. Anyway, I am going to go with Ingrid from the Disney Channel show Fillmore. It was a really cool show that was set up as like a kid's cop show focusing on the safety patrol of this little high school with Ingrid being one of the two main characters. She was an incredibly smart girl who was like set apart from the crowd because of it. And she was really interesting to watch, especially in her relationship with the title character, Fillmore. For Jay, I'm going to talk about Jack Skellington from The Nightmare Before Christmas. He's one of my favorites and from one of my favorites. But I've also done another video back on The Chilling Challenge talking about him a little bit. And lots of people who have done great videos regarding Jack, so I'm not going to linger on him too long. For Kay, I'm going to talk about Kidarakush, or Kida, from Atlantis the Lost Empire. She is one of my favorite characters, and she's another one that I would consider one of Disney's biggest snubbed princesses. She meets all of the criteria to be in the princess franchise, but her movie was a little bit of a disappointment at the box office, so she's not a member of the franchise, despite being... A beautiful, wonderful, well-rounded character that I would love for more people to pay attention to. For Elle, I'm going to talk about Lilo from Lilo and Stitch. Lilo is one of my favorite child characters. She is just so full of energy and so atypical from what we generally see in Disney child characters. And my little fun fact for that is... Lilo has two meanings. It can mean generous one or it can mean lost. So you can look at the title of the movie Lilo and Stitch with Stitch meaning like to pull something together or to hold something together as lost and brought together, which I think is like really clever and poetic and I would think that it would be an intentional thing on the creator's part. 
For M, I'm going to talk about Merida from Brave. She's one of my favorite princesses. She is absolutely kick butt and bold and I don't know. She's just such a good character and I love her so much. And I really love her movie and that it focuses on that important relationship between a mother and a daughter and focuses on how even the strongest bonds can be damaged through poor communication and how important it is to really hold on to that ability to talk to one another moving forward. For Anne, I'm going to talk about Nakoma from Pocahontas. She's always been one of my favorite side characters. I know that she um, kind of does something that's a little unfortunate for the title character in regards to warning people about things, but she has the best interests of her people at heart, and especially the best interests of her best friend at heart. For O, I'm going to talk about Oliver from Oliver and Company. Oliver is a really sweet little kitten that goes on this interesting story arc from a naive little sad pitiful thing that's so desperate for love to something that's learning to make it on his own to suddenly being surrounded by so much love and care to suddenly having all of it threatened. It's a really interesting character arc and it's really nice to see how he like holds on to his love for everyone no matter what stage of his life he's in. For P, I'm going to talk about both Pongo and Perdita from 101 Dalmatians. Honestly, man, couples goals. Like, they fit together so perfectly, and they're such a good match for each other that I can't consider, like, listing them one or the other. They belong together, and it's perfect. For Q, I'm going to talk about Quasimodo. He's one of my favorite Disney redheads, and he's such an interesting and complex character. And I probably shouldn't, but I really relate a lot to his deep-seated sense of self-loathing. For R, I'm going to talk about Radigan from The Great Mouse Detective. He's really one of those underrated villains that I think deserves a lot more attention. He's so clever and so in the face of everyone like he owns himself and he doesn't hesitate to let other people know that he is in fact in charge and I especially enjoy the relationship between Radigan and Basil like they play off each other perfectly and World's Greatest Criminal Mind is one of my favorite Disney villain songs. For S I'm going to talk about the OG it is Snow White. Without Snow who knows where we would be. There might not be an animated film in existence if it hadn't been for Snow White. So I am eternally grateful for this incredibly sweet, incredibly gentle, incredibly compassionate character leading the way for everyone else that followed. For T, I'm going to talk about Tiana. Now, from the sweet, gentle, compassionate nature of Snow White to Tiana's powerful, self-assured movements forward, there's a beautiful transition of seeing how far the Disney company has come. And I really just adore Tiana as a character. It's so refreshing to see a lead female character from Disney that feels very grounded in reality and feels very focused in what's important to her and what seems like a real-life goal for one of us. For you, I'm going to switch it up a bit and going to be about a villain again. This is Ursula from The Little Mermaid. She has possibly my absolute favorite villain song, and she's such an interesting character. And my little fun fact for Ursula is that she's based on a drag queen. Her designs were based on the drag queen Divine. For V, I'm going to go to Vixie from The Fox and the Hound. We don't get a whole lot of personality backstory from Vixie, but she seems like she's a very sweet, compassionate character, and she's very forgiving because Todd manages to just royally destroy their first meeting together. But... After a little bit of coaxing from Big Mama, 
they're able to patch it up and she and Todd hit it off and it's just really adorable. For W, I'm going to talk about the character Will from the Disney TV series Witch, which was a really interesting show. It was definitely like 100% a magical girl show in that there's these leading female characters who have secret magic powers and undergo an amazing transformation before they fight the bad guys. I don't know, it's just a really interesting concept and it was nice to see Disney tackle the idea of a magical girl. For X, I'm going to talk about XTR from the Buzz Lightyear Star Command animated series. XTR was a robot that was meant to help aid in the crew's missions going forward, and the little green men would joke that it meant that he was the expendable ranger. But he was a really clever, really compassionate little character, and it was fun to have the little nerd of the group. For why, I'm going to talk about Yensid. If you don't know, Yensid is the name of the magician in the Magician's Apprentice segment of Fantasia. The scene where Mickey has the star hat on. Yeah, the star hat actually belongs to Yensid, who was his teacher. And Yensid is the one that comes in and fixes everything after Mickey has destroyed it all. Yinsid is actually Disney spelled backwards, so that's why they gave that character that name. For Z, I'm going to talk about the character Zoe from the Disney show The Proud Family. Zoe was Penny's white girlfriend who was kind of bookish and nerdy and quiet, but I think it was really interesting that they juxtaposed that with her being 100% down for all of the activities that La Cienega and Dijonet and Penny would all do together, where they would, like, form a dance group and join competitions and stuff. It was really neat to see how they played off each other. Anyway, there is the full alphabet. I'm sorry that it took so long to get all of these. I hope you guys are having a great holiday season. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Merry Christmas. Blessed Solstice. Good Yule. And I'm sure there are so many more that I am unaware of or am forgetting. I hope you guys have a great holiday, whatever that holiday may be. Or if you don't celebrate a holiday, I hope you guys just have a good time of year. I love you all, and I hope you stay fabulous.